Welcome to Dezavi Productions. My name is Dezavi, and today I'm going to show you two ways to reduce latency while recording in Pro Tools. If you're not familiar with latency, it's the delay or echo that you hear when you're recording your vocal or playing a MIDI controller. The cause of the latency is the conversion of analog to digital, digital back to analog. In other words, the time that it takes for your computer and interface to convert your vocal into a digital signal, convert that digital signal back into the playback audio that you hear. Before you try any of the methods, make sure that your interface drivers are up to date as that can also cause an issue. Without further ado, let's get to it. All right, now the first method I'm gonna show you is the quickest and easiest way to reduce latency and that's by reducing your buffer size. I understand many viewers came here for a quick and easy solution and are most likely not interested in learning the technical aspect of what buffer size is, so I will not cover that today, but if in case you are, let me know in the comments section and I will make that a video in the future. So to reduce your buffer size, you're going to go to the top where it says setup, go to playback engine, and in the settings here it's going to say HW buffer size. This is hardware buffer size. Now the lower the buffer size, the less latency you will have. But if you go too low and your computer's performance is not optimized for that, you will have pops, clicks, and maybe even have your recording stop over and over and over again. So test a couple settings, see how low your computer can go. Me personally, I have it set to 64. Um, I would say try to shoot for 128. Um, if you have Pro Tools first, you will most likely have just two options, which is playback and recording. So go with the recording option. Now the rule of thumb behind buffer size is for recording, low buffer size to reduce latency. For mixing and mastering and processing the plugins, have a higher buffer size so that you have more processing power from the computer to use for the plugins. All right, so now let's move on to method number two. Now the second method deals directly with your interface and it's called direct input monitoring. When you direct input monitor, what you're doing is you're routing your input signal directly to your output signal, that being your headphones or your speakers, and the significance of this is that the audio that you're listening to is not the audio being processed by your computer or software, but rather the audio that's being processed by your interface alone. There are two ways to direct input monitor, and that depends on the interface that you're using. Some interfaces have a mix knob that allows you to adjust the blend between the direct input and the playback of the audio, such as the Scarlett by Focusrite. For other interfaces, you can route the signal using the standalone software that came with your interface. This software is usually available to you after you've registered your product online, after you've bought it. Now that we have an understanding of what direct input monitoring is, I'm going to demonstrate both methods for you. To help with the demonstrations, I'm going to bring in a beat that I made, and I'm going to add it in here. I'm going to turn it down. Okay. So me personally, the interfaces that I use are made by Focusrite. And no, this is not a paid partnership. I am in no way affiliated with Focusrite. I am sharing their products with you because to me, they are high quality interfaces for a reasonable price and well, because this is what I use. All right, so I'm gonna start with the standalone software method first. And the software that came with my Focusrite Claret is Focusrite Control. We are currently listening to line outputs nine and 10, and it is outputting playback one and two, basically what's coming from Pro Tools. Obviously, this is not a direct input monitor signal because we are listening to the processed audio from Pro Tools. What we also don't want to do is go to your hardware input and listen to only what's coming from your interface. Now, the reason for that is because although we have a direct input signal now, if we play the beat, we won't be able to hear it because we're not listening to any playback from the computer. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to create a custom mix. Now. What this does is it's listening to the direct input signal, but it's also listening to the playback. So this is why you hear the double voice. And to simply fix this, we're going to mute the channel that we're recording on. So now we have a direct input signal that we're monitoring. And if we play the beat, we can also listen to the beat that's being played back from the software. So now if you start recording and you start doing your thing, you can listen to the beat. You can direct um, input monitor yourself and with zero latency or reduced latency. Yeah, I'm not going to rap. So this is the standalone software method. Now let's move on to the mix knob. All right, so here we have the mix knob method. And as you can see, I have it set to full playback. So right now we're listening to 100% of what is being processed by the computer. So if you have a delay here, what you're going to do is you're going to start to pull it left. And the more you pull left, you're going to start to hear a double voice because now it's mixing your playback with your input, just like we had in the software, um, standalone software. So to avoid having a double, what you're going to do is you're going to mute this. 
and now we're listening to the direct input. But as I play the beat, listen to the beat and the level of the volume of the beat, and watch how it starts to drop as I go to the input. So I'm talking, I'm talking, you can hear me more, but you start to lose the beat. So if you go too far, you're gonna lose the beat completely. And now we have absolutely no playback being processed. So let's say you're gonna leave the input to about right there and you wanna raise the volume of the beat. So maybe it's too low, so you're gonna raise the volume. And this is how you can make up for that loss while also processing your voice and direct input monitoring. All right, one last thing before we close this out is I am fully aware of the load latency monitoring option that is here in the options drop down menu. And I had to consult to the user guide because I tried to use it and it's just not working. So from my understanding is that this is available only when you're using specific interfaces. And since my interface is not compatible with this option, I cannot use it, therefore I cannot demonstrate it. I apologize, um, but I promise you, I will look into it and see how we can make it available to us. And if maybe even the methods that we covered are more effective since we're dealing with the signal directly and not with the software. So thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for watching. If you found the video helpful, subscribing, liking, and commenting helps us reach many more interested in music production. I do music production tutorials using Pro Tools and Ableton, as well as review and demo music production equipment. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the next session.